Welcome to Revival Time Hub, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar, it shall never go out. Someone lift your hand, press in worship, press as you pray. We're spiritual people. The Bible says, The natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit because they are spiritually discerned. Pray in the spirit as you press into the grace that has come with this worship. Preparing your heart to receive tonight, preparing your spirit to rise to a new level, a new dimension. Someone is praying everywhere, all across the overflows. Online, make sure you connect in prayer. There are no participants, everyone is connecting in prayer. One more minute. Shani Kepala Sobrandi Gedebeleketa. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, everything you have for me tonight, I receive. Go ahead and pray. Everything you have in store tonight, I receive. If it is healing, I receive. Deliverance, I receive. Higher levels of wisdom, I receive. Access to virgin dimensions in the spirit, I receive. Someone is praying. Everything you have in store for me tonight, I receive by faith. Everything you have in store for me tonight, I receive. Yahweh, Yahweh, you are glorious, so glorious in your way. Yahweh, Yahweh, you are glorious, so glorious in your way. Sing it one more time from your heart. Yahweh, Yahweh, you are glorious, so glorious in your Sing, you are powerful, Lord, you are powerful, so powerful in Spirit of the living God, we pray that you breathe upon us tonight. Let your word come with clarity. Let it come with precision. Let it come to bless, to lift, to change, to transform, to impart upon our destinies. To you be all the glory tonight. For in Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Give Jesus a big hand clap. And please, you may be seated. Good evening, everybody. It's good to be in church tonight. And um, I know that God has brought you to do you good. May that good be your testimony in Jesus' name. We have a lot to do tonight. And um, we'll go straight to the business of tonight. But let me quickly charge our hearts. Never forget that in the presence of God, any and all things are possible. When you come to the presence of God, the Bible demands that number one, you believe that he exists, Hebrews 11, 6. And number two, you believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. So come with an expectation that God intends to speak to you. And his words carry life. His words carry healing. His words carry power. Hallelujah. Amen. My commitment as always to us 
is to make sure that we receive words, wisdom from the throne that equip us to number one, live very meaningful spiritual lives. And then number two, granting us access to the laws of the spirit to command results, make progress in our lives and destinies whilst we serve his purposes. And this remains my commitment even tonight. So pay attention to all that you'll be learning. Every truth, every teaching that comes here is tailor made in the place of prayer and in the place of study intended to further enlighten you and to empower you, to equip you with the spiritual resources that it takes to command victory, holistic victory in your life and destiny. You believe that will be your portion tonight? Shout a believing amen. amen. I'm teaching tonight on the school of prayer. I want to show us how to produce power in prayer. Many people do not know anything about prayer even though they pray. Like driving, sitting in front of the wheel does not guarantee that you know how to drive. There are people who have had cars for decades but they cannot drive. A few are illegal drivers because they have no driving license. No driving institution has accredited their driving and um, a few others drive but they have not gained mastery. They can drive their cars, but they cannot drive commercially. For instance, the skill it takes to drive within town is different from the skill it takes to drive across states. The man who drives from Abuja, say, to Lagos um, is different from the man who just drives from your house to maybe a filling station. The dynamics are different. And I'm praying tonight that we'll gain mastery in the place of prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. The first thing I want you to know tonight is that prayer can be taught. Prayer can be taught. All men can pray. All men should pray. But the prayer that produces power, the prayer that comes from a place of mastery is a product of training, is a product of spiritual education. Luke 11, 1. The disciples came to Jesus on observing the power that came from his prayer life. The Bible says, at a certain place, the disciples came to him and they made a request. They said, Lord, teach us to pray so men can be taught to pray. John taught his disciples to pray and the disciples of Jesus pleaded with him to teach them to pray. And when you read the account of Luke and even the account of Matthew, he began to teach them several things about prayer. So men can be taught to pray. Luke 18 and verse 1, the Bible says he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. It is a mandate upon all men that they pray. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17, the Bible says to pray consistently or to pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing season. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 2, the Bible says to be devoted, continue in prayer. It says, and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Continue in prayer. Continue. It's one thing to start, but it's another thing to continue. Make it habitual. Continue in prayer. Now for our text, James 5 and verse 16, the B part. James 5 and verse 16. I'll read the full verse. It says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. Then it says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, any righteous man, no name, any righteous man at all, provided that man is a righteous man and he's taught to pray. The Bible says it availeth much. Can you give us Amplified? Amplified James 5, 16. Amplified puts it in a very beautiful way. Here's what it says. The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, which is dynamic in its working. May that be a description of your prayer life from tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. So prayer can be taught. Prayer should be taught. And you are learning about prayer now. 
in the name of Jesus Christ, even though we're discussing prayer, I'm praying for you already that the kinds of results you have never seen in your prayer life you begin to experience after tonight's teaching. For some of you, you will go to the place of prayer with the same excitement you used to go to an ATM because you would have found a secret in prayer tonight. The same joy that you have when you are walking to a bank or an ATM, that would be the joy you will experience in the place of prayer. The goal of this teaching tonight is to take away the burden factor from prayer. That prayer does not become a necessary burden you have to carry just to sign the register of spirituality. Prayer is a journey and those who understand the dynamics have found a treasure in the place of prayer. May you find such tonight in the name of Jesus. Now, generally speaking, um, I have a confession to make that the, the idea of prayer tonight alone will not give the liberty to do justice to this comprehensive and all-important subject. Uh, there are many dimensions to prayer if you are to be thoroughly trained and um, by God's grace we have touched on a few areas and we will yet touch on a few others. But I have a central point of emphasis tonight. However, I will still touch on various areas just to bring us uh, to the same page. My, my emphasis tonight is to show you how prayers are answered. That, that is the part I think many believers do not understand. We we'll still touch on a few things, but the central point of my discussion tonight is to show you the dynamics of answered prayer. Hallelujah. So the idea of prayer is at the fabric of every practice of spirituality world over, whether it is Christianity as we know, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, it doesn't matter what faith practice, one area of agreement as seen by every faith practice is that prayer is a very essential component to defining spirituality. It is difficult to define spirituality using any reference uh, and then isolating the subject of prayer. Are we together? So prayer is a very cardinal index for measuring spirituality not just within the Christian faith, but across every faith practice whatsoever. The one thing that is common to any and almost all religions is that they subject themselves to some kind of prayer. Very quickly, what is prayer? What is the Bible's idea of prayer? Believers pray, Africans pray, many of us pray. I presume all of us pray, but if we are to be honest, we'll see that the results that we get from prayer vary according to the level of knowledge that is invested in that prayer. And so God wants to bring us to a greater place of mastery. But to start tonight, we need to understand the whole idea. What is prayer? What does the Bible mean when it talks about prayer? Write this down, please. In simple terms, prayer is communication with God. A platform that allows for communication with God quite honestly broadly speaking it's it allows for the communication with or interaction with the realm of the spirit and any kind of spirit really but then because we are believers we're limiting our study to the God of the Bible God Almighty prayer in simple terms is a platform that allows the believer to communicate with God. It is also defined as a platform that allows us to communicate our thoughts, our needs, our desires to God. A platform that allows the believer to communicate his or her thoughts, needs, and desires. Are we following so far? So you see that essentially prayer is about communication. It allows us to communicate with God, communicating our thoughts, our needs, and our desires. Prayer is also extended to mean fellowship with God, a platform that allows for fellowship with God. So it's not just about needs and desires. Prayer is also defined as a platform that allows us to fellowship with God. In addition to communicating our thoughts and needs and our desires, it's a platform that allows us to fellowship with God. Finally, 
Prayer is also a platform that allows us to hear and receive from God. To hear and receive from God. The Bible says God is spirit. The Bible says God is almighty. And you would think because he's spirit and almighty, mere men cannot hear him. But the Bible tells us that men can hear God, men can communicate with God, men can receive from God. From Genesis to Revelations, we see men communicating with God, getting accurate responses from him and responding to that which they heard or received from him. So prayer allows us not just to communicate with God, but it also allows him to communicate back to us. Hallelujah. If you're learning, say amen. amen. Every time you think prayer, think communication. Whether communicating needs, communicating thoughts, communicating worship, fellowship, and also a platform that allows you to receive back from God. Why pray? This is the first thing I want to address. Why pray? Why is the subject of prayer very important? I don't think there has been any time, and I, I most likely, maybe I'm wrong, but um, I stand to be corrected. I do not know any other time in human history where there has been a global widespread emphasis on the need or the necessity for prayer, especially within the continent of Africa. We have from church to church, book to book, seminar to seminar, conference to conference, preachers in their variety emphasizing the same subject, the need for prayer, the need for diligent prayer. People have written books, people have written voluminous dissertations on this subject of prayer. But I like to answer the question, why pray? Why do we need to pray? It's important because most believers pray without knowing the need. In, 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 in all honesty, I think most believers just found themselves in this drive to pray and in a bit to emulate those they admire, they got into this subject of prayer. It was not willingly so. It was not with determination and understanding. They just admired certain people, maybe men of God, maybe business people, maybe elders in the faith. And since the people credited their transformation to prayer, many people just follow suit. But you need a deeper conviction than that if your prayer life is going to be rich. So let's answer the question, why pray? What is the foundational um, revelation behind this call to prayer is it just to feel spiritual is it just to have power is it to ease the guilt of laziness spiritually why pray i will tell you and i want you to please listen the foundation or the foundational revelation that necessitates this whole subject of prayer is embedded in something god put within man I want you to listen, please listen carefully. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 gives us the first biblical account of man's creation as we know. And God said, verse 26, let us make man in our image. That is a very important word. Our image and after our likeness, let us make man. The first reason, the foundational reason why men must pray is in the very design of man. How God made man to function. So the Bible says God made man in his image. The image of God is a spiritual quality. Are we together now? And then to function means the way men function. Two hands, two feet, to speak, to hear and all of that. Now, God gave man a very unique gift at the point of creation. That gift is called the wheel. Everybody say the wheel. One more time, say the wheel. As simple as this sounds, it is a very, very, very important subject that God gave man in creating man. He gave man a unique ability called the wheel. The power to make decisions, the power to make choices. And from the moment God gave man that unique gift, that unique ability, God designed that ability in man such that as far as he's alive, nothing should sustain the power to take away the will of man. The only thing that can take the power of man's will is death. So the moment a man dies, 
he no longer has the ability as much as the Bible reveals to make any choice any decision at all upon the earth but for as long as a man is alive he is able to use that gift of the will to make choices but there are implications to giving that gift that gift meant that God would never assume anything about man again from the time man received the gift of the will man had a mandate to always verbalize his intentions verbalize his needs communicate his desires it seemed as if it became illegal for God to superimpose into man's space bringing anything at all without that man making demands of it are we together now I hope you know that with gifts come responsibility if I give you a car while I'm congratulating you for receiving the car keys, it comes with responsibilities. You need to know how to maintain the car, to fuel the car. The next time you call me to give you a lift, I'm going to ask you, how about the car I gave you? So God gave man a unique gift, but with that gift came a very serious responsibility. This is the foundation for prayer. If you do not understand this, your prayer life will be acting, you will be tired, you will be weary, you will backslide and repent, backslide and repent until you backslide with no need for repentance again. This is a lot of many believers and the reason is because they do not even understand the foundational revelation upon which prayer is built. So back to my story, God gave man a will and from the moment God gave man a will, can you imagine that God in his might, his wisdom would have to allow man to use that will. That God designed his work with man from the time he gave man a will to be a response system. That means man would have to use that gift of will to communicate his desire, to communicate the need for help. Are we together now? And that God would not assume even though God left something in his dealings with man called his mercy. And there is a reason why he left it there. Because there are times man would have the need, but because of ignorance or oppression, he would not know how to call upon God. At that point, mercy becomes another door that God can still follow and help man. If God did not add mercy, all men may die maybe within a week. Because you will be learning that we do not know what to pray for as we ought to. And so there are many times we have received help in our lives that were not directly credited to our asking. We did not know, even know that we needed it. God left his mercy. Are we together? He wrapped up his relationship with man such that even though he gave us a will, he still put his mercy as the platform for his relating with man. If you're following, say amen. amen. So why pray? Matthew 7 and verse 7. Jesus is teaching now. Matthew 7 and verse 7. Why pray? Because God gave man a will and he desires that man uses that will, the ability to choose, the ability to make petitions. Jesus says it this way, ask and it shall be given to you. Understand that this is Jesus teaching. Ask, he says, and it shall be given to you. We are safe to reverse it. Refuse to ask and even though it is available, it will not be given to you. Then he says, seek and ye shall find. Knock, he says, and it shall be opened unto you. Verse 8, for everyone that asketh, receive it. Who receives? The one who asks, not the one who wants. Many believers want many things from God. Many believers desire many things from life. But the Bible says the receiver, receiving is a reward for asking. Everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh, the Bible says, it shall be opened. Why do we pray? The Bible mandates that receiving only responds to asking. Matthew, Mark 11 and verse 24. Mark 11, 24. Jesus again is teaching. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, not if ye pray, not you are advised to pray, when ye pray, it says believe that ye receive them. Are you seeing now? So we now connect asking to prayer and receiving. Is it making sense now? Remember, it is only those who ask that receive. 
And now Jesus is introducing something between asking and prayer. That the way we ask is in prayer so that we receive. So we can connect this with Matthew 7, 7. That everyone that asketh in prayer is the one who receives. Are we together? Why pray? Because only those who ask using the gift of the will that God has given them receive. This is very important. When you have your phone, most of us here have phones and um, you have within your phone the ability to call. Call a helpline, call a friend. Am I right on that? Now, if you need, say you have access to my number and I told you you can call me anytime. Did you know that if you fail to call, assuming there's no network problem, there's no recharge card problem, and then you do not call me. You see, you can be in danger, but I have bound myself by my word that if you refuse to call, I assume you are safe or I assume whatever trouble you are having is within your power to deal with it. I have taught you that the greatest demonstration of humility is prayerfulness. When you are prayerless, you are proud. It's a declaration of independence that you do not need the strength, the wisdom, the assistance of heaven. Are we learning now? This is very important. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. So every time you go to the place of prayer, you are making use of this unique gift that God gave everyone your will you are verbalizing your desire whether expressing it in love in fellowship whether expressing it as uh, receiving answers to petitions and whatever it is if you fail to exercise that will in prayer you will live a defeated life even though you are saved you would think being born again should exempt you from prayer there are many believers who are saved but because they do not understand the prayer ministry, nor how to utilize this gift of the will, the hymn writer says, Oh, what needless pain we bear. There are certain pains, there are certain battles that are needless. If only we know how to use this gift of the will to call for help. Hallelujah. Many years ago, I used to watch wrestling. There's something they call wrestling. And uh, there's an aspect of that wrestling called tag team. Remember, where two people fight two people. One will usually stand outside the ring and hope that his other colleague does a good job. But sometimes things go really bad. Things go really sour, especially for the other one. They will beat the living daylight out of him and while he's there gasping for breath, the other guy is energized and angry, just hoping he can touch him. You see, remember? And he can stretch while the other one draws him back calls his brother but for some he can muzzle energy just enough and sometimes that can be the difference between winning or losing stretch himself almost onto death and touch the other brother and once that other one jumps inside the ring he can even defeat two of the people at once and within minutes victory is declared that's how prayer is that the man may be weak, may not have the power, but there is a system of assistance, but that there are rules of engagement. Even though the other one is mighty, in fact, almighty in this case, but then he stands at the other side waiting, respecting his own word, that if you believe that you do not have the power to run your life, you show that you need him very fast. Still back to my subject of the wrestling. There are some who don't even allow themselves to be beaten. After the first punch, they quietly... That is wisdom. Because eventually they will still beg for help. So why delay after you have been beaten? Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Are we learning now? So the first thing I want you to know is why we pray. Anyone who does not pray is not exercising the gift of the will that God gave him. You are wasting the privilege, the advantage, and the leverage of an invincible 
God. I hate to use the word ally, but since he's called us co-laborers with him, it's safe to say there is, there is an ally that is indestructible, the creator of the ends of the earth, waiting to coordinate the resources of heaven to your advantage. But the only thing he says, we have not because we ask not. Not because Satan is powerful. Men like E.M. Bounds will show that there is power that is contained in the place of prayer. If only believers knew the unlimited resources that could come to them from heaven, most believers would take prayer seriously. It will not just be about impressing a man of God or impressing a group of people or showing through social media you are anointed. The, the, the need for prayer is bigger than that, that your life literally depends on it. How could you know that you are sitting before such a leverage and then reject it? You have to be ignorant. Are we together? Again, I give you my card, say, and that card cons, con, you know, has some money in it. And I'm telling you, when you get to the mall, when you get to whatever it is, you have unlimited access. You use the card. All I need you to do is inform me and then you use it. I don't need to give you. It's with you. But I'm saying the condition is inform me. There is something I will tell the bank when you inform me. And it makes the card active immediately. You can roam around the mall in pain. You can roam around while your children cry. Mommy, can't we eat? Daddy, can't we eat? That card looks like there's money in it. And you can arrogantly swipe it and it does not work. Because the condition is to inform me. But if you are childlike enough to inform me, in one moment you can fill your trolley with baskets of provisions. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Many believers do not know that the real victory of the believer, the real victory of the believer is coordinated and released in the place of prayer. Are we learning? We pray because God gave us the gift of the wheel. And for as long as we know and learn the dynamics of exercising that wheel, verbalizing, communicating our desire, our helplessness, our challenges, our frustrations, God is more than willing. He has bound himself with a covenant that for every believer who uses the gift of that wheel to call upon him, that he will coordinate the resources of heaven to the advantage of that believer. Shout, I will pray. I will pray. One more time, say, I will pray. I will pray. What you just said is, I'm ready to be victorious. What you just said is, I'm ready to walk in partnership with God. I am tired of walking alone. Life is not that hard. It is hard when you are walking alone. But when you have a trusted ally, proven the creator of the ends of the earth, you are able to walk as frail as you are. You will look indomitable because of the one who stands behind you. The Bible says he stands behind you as a mighty, terrible one. Mighty, terrible one. Number two. What is the assignment of prayer? Now that you know, I need to teach you this very quickly. What is the assignment of prayer? Now, I'm going to make a statement that will disturb many of you. Prayer is not the answer to everything. Listen again, I'm, I will repeat it. Prayer is not the answer to everything. It is one of the major keys of the kingdom, but not the only key of the kingdom. Let me repeat it again. Prayer is not the answer to everything. The Bible does not teach that. The Bible tells us that prayer must be involved in everything. Are we together now? It says be anxious for nothing. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. Be anxious for nothing. It says but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request concerning whatever it is be made known unto God so everything in your life should involve prayer prayer should be part of every aspect of your life now with all sincerity and, and with every sense of respect when we talk about things like finances and well-being and success sometimes even though well-intentioned Many believers say prayer has nothing to do with finances. Prayer has nothing to do with success. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Provided God is involved, prayer is involved. Are we together? Except you do not believe that God helps men to prosper. 
and the Bible says it convincingly God made Uzziah to prosper second Chronicles chapter 25 and verse 5 I believe 26 and verse 5 I hope I got it right that as long as he sought the Lord who made him prosper God made him prosper God is able to make men prosper when the Lord appeared to Solomon Solomon requested that he would have an understanding heart and God told him I will also give you other things aside from an understanding heart I will give you riches wealth and honor I will give you God gives men I don't know how you got yours but I like how the Bible says it my help cometh from the Lord he leaves it as a personal affair if your own comes from your uncle save Johnny but my own help comes from the Lord are we learning now prayer is not the key to everything but prayer must be involved in everything there is no aspect of your life that you should take away the subject of prayer out of that is dangerous theology very dangerous theology your health prayer your finances prayer your job prayer your education prayer prayer should be involved in every aspect of your life humorously i say it this way that when prayer is not the key it becomes the hand that holds the key when prayer itself is not the key it becomes that hand that holds any key so if the key is wisdom prayer becomes the hand that holds the key of wisdom if the key is favor prayer becomes the hand that holds the key prayer is an amplifier of anything intelligence plus prayer becomes super intelligence Favor from prayer plus prayer becomes, uh, you know, a spirit backed favor. Many people have been taught sincerely but erroneously that there are certain aspects of their lives where they should take the business of prayer out of. I do not condemn those who say it, I understand what they mean to say, but it is still wrong. Prayer must be involved in every aspect of the believer's life. For most people who teach that, what they are trying to correct is the subject of teaching that prayer is the one and only key. And I agree with them on that. Prayer is not the one and only key. If it were so, Africa would not be where it is today. I do not know any continent that prays more than Africa. And it looks like our problems multiply as we pray. That means we need to add other keys, the keys of wisdom, the keys of knowledge, the keys of integrity, the keys of leadership, the keys of diligence. These are the keys alongside prayer that drives the believer to holistic victory. If you are learning tonight, shout amen. amen. So prayer is not the only key, but prayer must be involved in every aspect of the believer's life. I said that to explain the assignment of prayer. Now prayer is a subject that all of us are still students and I'm still learning myself. I've had the honor of learning from great men, authorities in prayer, people dead and some alive, people who really understand the subject of prayer with proven results in their lives. I've read many books on prayer. I've studied the subject many times myself and I remain a student of prayer. And this is what I have found in my study that there are essentially, and I'm not going to do a long teaching, I'm just doing a summary because I have taught this year. But for sake of those who are listening for the first time, there are four basic assignments of prayer in the life of the believer. You may want to write this down very quickly. Number one, the first assignment of prayer according to scripture is for the growth and transformation of the believer please write that down the first assignment of prayer according to scripture is for the growth and transformation of the believer popular scripture Luke 9 29 and as he prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistering I have taught it here and let me repeat it again that you can pray various versions of yourself to lamb light you can pray away the weak version of you and bring out the strong version of you. You can pray the carnal version of you away and bring the spiritual version of you. A, a, a kind of metamorphosis happens to the believer in the place of prayer. And I like to use the example of molting. How reptiles like snake molt. They come out of their old self into a bigger, fresher, richer self. That's what prayer can do. That you literally can come out of your old, weak, carnal, undesirable 
turning self into a stronger, more spiritually vibrant self. You believe that? Shout amen. amen. So the first assignment of prayer is for the growth and the transformation of the believer. And let me stop to say this, that the major part of your activity in prayer would be centered to achieve this goal. I've said it here in Koinonia that most of the things we desire were supposed to come naturally through growth. Remember that? One of the miracle services that most of the things we pray for, the answer to those requests were supposed to gravitate to our lives at the instance of growth. That means no matter how you pray, if you do not contend for growth, there is a version of you that cannot receive certain answers. It doesn't matter what you ask God for. You imagine that someone who does not know anything about ministry, for instance, is asking God to give you a global ministry. Lord, give me a global anointing. Bring everybody who is demon-possessed to me, witches and wizards, curses, let them just come. I know what to do with them. God is too merciful to answer that kind of prayer because already you can see that the fact that he has the boldness to make that request, is, is in, it means he's in ignorance. Are we together? The disciples were overconfident, believing that because they were with Jesus, they could cast out any spirit whatsoever. Jesus went up the Mount of Transfiguration and they took laws into their hands. They now tried to cast out a spirit from an epileptic patient. You see what happened to them? They embarrassed themselves there. Their egos were stung. And when Jesus came, he cheaply, easily, freely brought deliverance to that boy. It was Jesus that said the boy had a deaf and dumb spirit. Yet the boy was not deaf, he was not dumb, he was epileptic. Yet the name of the spirit that came out of him, says Jesus, was a deaf and dumb spirit. But when he was delivered, the disciples had to meet Jesus. They kept thinking about it. They said, why couldn't we cast out this one? And Jesus began to give them education that there are levels, even this anointing thing, just because you have it, it's not all purpose. You keep growing in it. And your possibilities are based on the, your individual command of knowledge backed up with spiritual power. Are we learning now? So the first assignment of prayer is for growth and transformation. Number two, very quickly. The second assignment of prayer is as a platform to make requests and obtain promises. To make requests and obtain promises. We saw that already in Mark eleven twenty four. Mark eleven twenty four. What things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have it. Philippians 4 and verse 6 says, Be anxious for nothing. We read that earlier. But in everything by prayer and supplication, it says, Let your request be made known unto God. Let your request be made known. Don't assume. Again, refer to what I taught you on the wheel. Let your request, verbalize it, communicate it in prayer. Number three, the third assignment of prayer according to scripture is as a platform to make dec decrees and to establish spiritual realities. To make decrees and to establish spiritual realities. Job twenty two twenty eight. 28. To make decrees. So in the place of prayer, we have an opportunity to make decrees. And thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established unto the one who makes the decree, not the one who desires establishment. Thou shalt decree a thing also, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon your ways. Numbers 14, 28. School of prayer. Numbers 14, 28. Say unto them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, it says, as ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do unto you. As you have spoken, as you have spoken, so will I do. As you have spoken. Is someone learning now? So prayer assignment number three is as a platform to make decrees and to establish spiritual realities. That means when you open up your mouth and begin to declare, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid of? I decree and declare that this is the day the Lord has made. I rejoice and I am glad in it. Is someone learning now? You are making decrees. You are making decrees. You are making decrees. 
It looks like you are just speaking, going around a room, or you are just stretching your hands. But the Bible tells us that that is also prayer. And that the things you are making decree of will be established in your life. Someone say amen. amen. Number four. The fourth and for this teaching, the final assignment of prayer as revealed in scripture is for warfare and intercession. Warfare and intercession. Prayer is a platform that allows the believer to engage in warfare and intercession. Let me define for you what warfare is. Warfare is a spiritual system by which we use the word of God in prayer to establish the victory that has been wrought in Christ. To establish the victory over principalities, over situations, over conditions. The platform that allows us to take advantage of the word of God and other resources, the blood, the name, to establish the victory experientially that has been wrought in Christ. It's important I say that because when we talk about warfare, we have various ideas across the body of Christ. There are certain definitions of warfare I do not believe in. For instance, an endless contention between Satan and the saints with no possibility of victory. The Bible does not teach that. The Bible teaches us that the believer can come into a settled, established victory. Are we together? Warfare and prophetic intercession. Why warfare? First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. The Bible tells us to be sober, to be vigilant. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, even though you are a child of God, washed by the blood of the Lamb, even though you are now a recipient of the life of God, the Bible says this, the devil is still roaming around like a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. John 10.10 10 says, The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. To steal, to kill, and to destroy. And Jesus told us in Luke 10.19, He says, I give you authority and power over snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And if you know how to engage it, nothing shall by any means hurt you. You don't know how to engage it, you will quote the scripture while you are being hurt daily and maybe forever. You see, most people read the Bible scientifically and they do not see the thoughts between the lines. You read this scripture and you can blindly claim things and never see victory in your life. Oh, I've been given authority and power over snakes and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy. You are correct. But do you understand the dynamics of engaging that authority, engaging that power? This is why I'm teaching you. It's in the place of prayer. If you do not know how to engage it in as much as the victory in Christ is a reality, you will still walk in perpetual defeat. Here's how the Bible puts it. There remained a rest for the people of God. They are the people of God purchased by his blood, but there is still a Sabbath that they are yet to enter. And the Bible says, let us labor to enter that rest. Paul is teaching us now to labor and enter that rest. So a quick recap. The four major assignments of prayer according to scripture. Number one, for the growth and transformation of the believer. Number two, as a platform to make requests and obtain promises. Number three, to make decrees and establish spiritual realities in your life and in my life. And finally, for warfare and intercession. Warfare and intercession. Can we go to the next part? The third thing I want to teach you tonight, I have taught it, but then I want to do a quick recap, is found in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18. The Bible tells us that there are various kinds of prayer. Let's read together. Ready? One, two, go. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. One more time. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit all prayer niv please niv i believe says all kinds of prayer i hope i'm right on that all kinds of prayer that's right praying in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers that means there are various kinds of prayers and let's see the one you know and the one you don't know in this teaching because many believers know the one they were taught 
or the one they saw within maybe respectfully their denomination or whatever man of God model prayer to them but there are various kinds of prayer and I want to run through a list are you ready to learn number one the first kind of prayer that the Bible teaches in no particular order I'm just helping to guide your understanding remember this is school of prayer so this is a lecture are you ready number one praying in the spirit what we call praying in tongues this is the first kind of prayer in no particular order that we find in scripture there is such a kind of prayer as praying in the spirit or praying in tongues first corinthians chapter 14 and verse 15 amplified please the school of prayer someone is gaining mastery now you are learning that what you have been doing may be one over five or one over six no wonder the inefficiency in prayer it's amazing the things people tell God and how they tell him in a place of prayer so don't just tell me I am prayerful what are you saying are we together not everyone who writes an exam passes the exam you may be there you may be at the venue you may sit down have a paper have a question paper and write it and come out and smile together with those who will get a but when the result is out there is a b c E or D, depending on what parameter you are using, and F, there is even absent. And yet the person came for the exam. Maybe he forgot his exam card or he forgot something. He will still be put absent there. Or he didn't finish paying school fees. Absent. Are we together? Hmm. Praying in the spirit. 1 Corinthians 14, 15. Then... What am I to do? He says, I will pray with my spirit. What does that mean? By the Holy Spirit that is within me, but I will pray also intelligently with my mind and understanding. He says, I will sing with my spirit by the spirit that is within me and I will sing intelligently with my mind and my understanding. So you can pray in or with the spirit and you can pray with your understanding. Just back down 1 Corinthians chapter 14, now verse 2. Let's look at verse 2. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 2. It says, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men. He's talking about the prayer language of tongues. But unto God. For no man understandeth or catches his meaning, because in the Holy Spirit he utters secret truths. And hidden things not obvious to the understanding is someone learning now go to verse 4 same scripture we'll read the a part he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edified himself builds up himself this is the first prayer model that is given to us in no particular order that you pray in tongues now listen please the subject of praying in the spirit or praying in tongues has been an age-long debate but let me tell you this, I'm not here to create any further arguments. I can tell you based on the authority of scripture and in the experience of my own life and those who have modeled Christ in a way that is enviable, you will never have a truly rich spiritual life if you do not open up yourself to receive as an added advantage to the life of God that you have received this gift of the prayer language. It has nothing to do with being a Pentecostal or being a charismatic, unfortunately. I know the reason why uh, other faith, you know, denominations that are a lot more modest is because of the way tongues is administered. It's administered with a lot of foolishness and carelessness and it makes it so unattractive. There's a way people do it that you say, no, I'm not, I'm not into this, this madness. But there is a decent way of engaging the prayer language such that you get maximum utility from that gift. By this, I'm calling on anyone here who is yet to be filled with the Holy Spirit with evidence of fluent tongues. Fluent tongues, like any other language. Are we together? Fluent tongues. Open up your spirit to receive tonight and then you can always be open to receive from our prayer department it was designed with that as one of the assignments a platform that gives you opportunity to be filled with the holy spirit something happens to you when you engage in the spirit consistently consistently again my reservation goes to our dear pentecostals and charismatics because of the 
misuse of this gift. It's been so battered that it's brought reproach to the name of the Lord. How could God give such a gift that looks like it makes people mad? No, sir. Anything that comes from God is good and it is perfect. If it was misused, it came as a result of ignorance. Who is learning? Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. A weak man becomes strong when you pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. An undiscerning person becomes a person of such profound discernment. Praying in the spirit helps you to access illumination by the spirit. There are so many things you miss when you do not submit yourself to the prayer language in tongues. Can we go to the second prayer model? The second prayer model that the Bible reveals is faith-filled declaration of scriptures. Faith-filled declaration of scripture. This is the second prayer model that we see. Faith-filled declaration of scripture. Psalm 102 verse 2 and 3. Psalm 102, 2 and 3. Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thy ear unto me in the day when I call. Answer me speedily. Verse 3. For my days are consumed like smoke and my bones are burned like Psalm 107, not 102. We're reading 107 media. Help us. Let the redeemed, that's right. Let the redeemed of the Lord, Koinonia. Let the redeemed of the Lord, whom he had redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Verse 3. The Bible says, and gather them out of the lands from the east, the west, the north, and the south. Let the redeemed of the Lord not just believe so, not just know so, but say so. Let the healed of the Lord say so. Let the prosperous of the Lord say so. Make faith-filled declarations. It is a kind of prayer. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 4, please. Ecclesiastes 8 and verse 4. The second scriptural model, the Bible says to pray all kinds of prayers. It says where the word of a king, for instance, Joshua Selman is, it says there is power. Where the word of a king, he has made us kings unto our God. You believe you are royalty? Don't just say I am royalty. You must utilize the blessings that come. Keep that scripture, please. Where the word of a king is, there is power. But that power is released through words. When kings are silent, everything goes wrong. But when they speak, what they speak becomes law. It becomes decrees. Are we together? Faith-filled declarations of scripture. i give you an example of what that means. So you go to the place of prayer. In addition to praying in the spirit, you begin to make declarations. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that the hand of God is upon my life. Favor is at work in my life. You are literally carrying scripture and you are speaking it. I am a blessing. I decree and declare that in me, all the families of the earth are blessed. A thousand shall fall by my side, 10,000 by my right side, but none shall hurt me with my eyes shall I see and behold the reward of the wicked. It is a powerful dimension of prayer. Declaring scripture, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. When men say there is a casting down, I decree and declare that there is a lifting up. Are we together? The Lord compasses me with favor like a shield. In the name of Jesus Christ, Gentiles come to my light and their kings to the brightness of my rising. For my shame I receive double. Where men have deserted me so that no one would pass through me, I become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid of? The Lord is the strength of my light. They may come against me in one way, but they will scatter in seven ways. The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon my lot. Are we together now? Faith-filled declaration. If you are too big to declare scripture, you are also too big to see it happen in your life. Never get to a point in the spirit where declaring scripture looks like childishness. It is how God created the heavens and the earth. And God said, the righteousness that is of faith speaks. It doesn't assume, it speaks. In the name of Jesus, it was Papa Copeland who would say that sometimes he would go to the place of prayer and he's declaring scripture on all his organs. 
my lungs are functioning well my head is functioning well in the name of jesus no madness i will wake up coordinated no incoherence people laughed at him but many who laughed have long died the man is still alive walking today in his 80s he's still running conferences be careful when inexperienced people without result want to create a template for your destiny they will destroy you and repent later on are we together Changing everything in obedience to Christ. He's recreating everything in obedience to Christ. Restoring everything in obedience to Christ. Seeing obedience to Christ. In obedience to Christ. In obedience to Christ. In obedience to Christ. That's what God is doing. God is showing you where you are missing it. For some of us, when you go to the place of prayer, you would stay there for long, but there's no efficiency. You are not declaring anything. Scriptural prayer model. You are making declarations. There are times that I just walk up and down. I'm walking around the house and I'm making declarations. You will think that, you see, my reality today is what I spoke yesterday. Tomorrow will show what I'm speaking now. Your words on, always go ahead of you. If you are not saying anything, don't be angry when you enter an empty room. An empty tomorrow. An empty tomorrow with no blessings, no favor, no helpers, no nothing. And you say, God, but this is unfair. He said, remember, I gave you the wheel. You had the power to call helpers and schedule them like ushers in your tomorrow. And enter your tomorrow gallantly with honor. But you carelessly ignored it. Some of you calling this model childish. No, this is how kings reign. Declare scriptures by faith. He's changing everything in obedience to Christ. He's rebuilding everything in obedience to Christ. I pray over Koinonia every day. And it's not only help. I speak. Speak to the ministry. Speak to your life. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says the path of the just. Not just the path of the ministry. The path of your own destiny too. The ministry is not a building. It's you. The path of the just is as a shining light. I expect testimonies every week revelations manifestations of the hand of god the word of god is coming with power you think i just prepare notes and come and preach my goodness my words arrive church before me i send the words in the name of jesus willing ears open hearts deconstructing wrong beliefs old ideologies it's changing everything in obedience to christ he's redirecting everything now let me tell you something if you refuse to declare over your life your destiny will receive anybody's declaration because man lives by words your destiny is not just looking for food it's also looking for words if it's not your words it will pick up any word like your phone picking up any wi-fi picking up anything in the air causes ill speakings the scourging tongues of men when someone says it will not be well with you as that word is coming it meets a fence of prophetic words already no enchantment and no divination against Joshua Selman shall stand surely they shall gather but because their gathering is not of the Lord they shall scatter they come in one way they disperse in seven ways Apostle, but it looks like the spirit of death is looking for me. It's not only you, it's looking for all of us, my brother. It's not only you, it's looking for everyone, including those living long. Don't allow any word just enter your garden, and then you see the Bible says the seed is the word. Blessed in the city, blessed in the country, favored of the Lord, Beulah, Hephzibah, the delight of the nations, 
in the name of Jesus the hand of the Lord is upon me his grace is at work in me there is a spirit in me the inspiration of the Almighty makes me of understanding this is the house that the Lord has blessed I am planted in the house of God therefore I flourish in the courts of my God even in old age I am fat and flourishing all my organs are working perfectly the Bible says he keepeth his bones and none is missing he keepeth his bones listen listen koinonia listen to me please listen to me the times that we live in right now demand you being serious with your destiny if you keep quiet you see when the devil wants to attack you he knows that there are evil words already coming then he does something to your prayer life and while you are quiet you find out that something is growing in your garden causes pain trouble there are arrows that fly by day the arrows are not metallic objects the arrows are words the arrows are words my brother the arrows are not metallic objects no you think the arrow is wood with a, a sharp edge no the arrows are words oh let it not be well with him let it not be well with her. Let all her children become arm robbers. And you stand up and say, no way. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, in the name of Jesus, I build a garrison around my life. I build a garrison around this ministry. A thousand shall fall by my side, 10,000 by my right side. None shall hurt me. With my eyes shall I see and behold the reward of the wicked. As for me, the Lord is my inheritance. Do you believe what you're hearing? The school of prayer. Please sit down. Please sit down. Faith-filled declarations of scripture. Now I must say this. The key to engaging this prayer, this kind of prayer effectively, is a thorough knowledge of the promises of God. You have to be vast in understanding scripture. If you are not a student of the word, you cannot engage this prayer model. Because you see, you can't be checking your Bible. Um, Jeremiah 31 and verse 1. Oh God, I did. No, you need to have it so that it does not interrupt your pace of prayer. The word must be hidden in your heart. So the moment you begin to engage, for 30 minutes, you are just sending arrows from your spirit to your destiny. Ever and you know because the Holy Ghost is there helping you he's pushing the scriptures even the ones you don't know you know it's at the point of confession they will come out do you know if you are not praying you may not be able to confess to speak some of those scriptures you can't even remember them but the moment you start praying with accuracy the last time you read it was five years but it's like a regurgitation it's still there in your spirit go and ask preachers there are many times when they are off the pulpit, they can't even quote back the scripture they were quoting while they were on stage. They may forget everything, but when that cloak comes upon them, they will run the Bible like a computer. It's changing everything in obedience to Christ. Number three, very quickly. The third scriptural model according to scripture the kind of prayer that every believer can engage in the place of prayer is called the prayer of inquiry. The prayer of inquiry. 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 8. The prayer of inquiry. This is the kind of prayer you pray when you don't know what to do. When you are in confusion. When you are at a, a, a central point in your destiny. Navigating seasons. Ending one season and beginning another. And David inquired of the Lord saying shall i pursue after this troop shall i overtake them i don't want to take a foolish decision in my destiny i am a warrior but i can't take life for granted and he answered him pursue for thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail recover there is such a thing as the prayer of inquiry hallelujah the secret to engaging this kind of prayer 
is patience. 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 God speaks, but he's not always speaking. Hear me, Koinonia. God speaks, but he's not always speaking. You were created in his image. You speak, but you are not always speaking. Most people think God is a talkative who is just talking and just tune your radio, you hear him. It's a lie. Human beings are not like that. God is not like that. You would hear the Bible say, on the fifth day of the tenth month, the word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. He says, until his word came, the word tried him. Yours is to be patient. Are we together? It is the absence of this prayer that has caused pain in the life of many people. I will tell you why. There is a way that cement right unto a man. There is a way, there is a job that cement right. Are we together? There is a country that cement right unto a man. There is a local government that cement right. There is a state that cement right. There is a business that cement right. The Bible says, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Father, should I pursue? Should I pursue? This door is open before me, but should I pursue? I have taught you, don't just enter doors carelessly because they are opened. Find out who opened it and find out where the door is leading to. Because even the prison, you enter a prison through a door. So that you don't see a door open and you say, thank you, Jesus. You enter and find out that all that are there are walls and you can't go back again. Prayer of inquiry. Father, all this anointing you are putting upon my life, is it for ministry? Not just that people come and say the way you are now. I'm surprised you are not yet a general overseer. You say, you mean it? Tell me more. Say this, everything is on you. It's written, general overseer. You now go and open a ministry and you will be disappointed. Nothing respects you. Not men, not spirits, not demons. And you'll be wondering, oh God, what am I doing? After five years of struggle, God will say you've been on your own. I've been trying to tell you. But every time you go to pray, you don't allow me to speak. You speak to me and walk away. As soon as you are done telling me what you want to say, amen. And you are out. You are, as you are saying the amen, you are closing the door. The prayer of inquiry requires patience. Number two, the prayer of inquiry requires silence. When you pray, sometimes you are still, then you will know. The Bible says, be still and know. Be still and know. There are times will be noisy to speak with energy, but there are times, let me tell you this. It's the reason why you should not be religious when you are walking with God. You can go to the place of prayer and shout for one hour, and suddenly a grace comes upon you and you don't have the energy to shout again. Don't fight it. Sit quietly. Something is about to come. But because we have not been trained, you just feel, ah, I'm, is it sleep? It's not necessarily sleep. In that stillness, His Majesty comes. A scripture comes. A word comes. An instruction comes. Check a YouTube video. An instruction comes. Check this scripture. An instruction comes. Read this book. Sometimes the instruction can just come as the name of someone. The name of a sermon. Even if it's a sermon you've listened to before. You finish praying for hours, struggling your rent, everything, and whilst you are seated there, a testimony you had one day in Koinonia just comes to your spirit. It's how God speaks. This grace called favor. And it becomes strong upon your heart. God is saying, listen there. My voice for you is in that sermon. Although you were there when it was preached, you did not hear my voice there. Now you listen to it. You will hear something I will tell you that you did not hear that day. There are many ways God speaks to us. Because our hearing are in levels. Are we together? There are times that people become too noisy. God cannot even tell them anything. They finish talking to God and then they close the door. Their spirits are too noisy. Even their dream life cannot be an opportunity for God to minister to them. I have a teaching series, uh, you know, supernatural experiences, dreams, visions, trances. I will teach you. Because most of you, that thing you are calling a dream is an attack. Notice everything you have been seeing. When you stand up and do it, it gets you into trouble. Everything you see as an instruction in the dream, you act upon it, you either have a problem with police or have a problem with people, it's an attack. When God speaks, he speaks peace. 
when you get instructions in the realm of the spirit that continue to cause you trouble perpetually you can measure the voice of God by the peace and progress it brings which is what most people don't have don't just wake up from a dream and act everything you saw there no there are rules for both interpreting and acting on dreams and the central rule is submitting everything to the Word of God Apostle boy, I had a dream in the dream I gave somebody my car hold on before you part with your car and now get into trouble don't assume it means God says you should give the car we need to measure the spiritual life of the person who had the dream first to verify what you had with wise counsel make war most people have gotten into trouble today let me tell you this I hope you're learning the prayer of inquiry there are people today who have believed a lie and they would, lie, they would die believing that lie because the devil manipulated dreams, manipulated visions. Are we together? And because they do not understand how to engage this prayer of inquiry. A prayer of inquiry. Should I pursue? Should I overtake? Someone learn to ask God that question. No. You don't ask him for help. You can't ask God, should I wear a white dress or a black dress? God will say, no, don't go and listen to say, uh, uh, apostles teaching success systems. And I teach you there how to use your mind. Are we together? Yeah. You can't come and meet God and say, should I wear a yellow shoe or a black shoe? No. I'm talking of destiny defining decisions. You want to carry your wife and children out of Nigeria? And the only thing that becomes a green light is visa stamped on your, your passport. That's a risk. That's a risk. What if the destiny helpers of your children are close to you? You need to find out. Lord, should I pursue? When Satan wants to stop you from hearing the voice of God, he will surround you with good things. So that you will think that every good thing there is just God. And you will act upon good things till they destroy you. It's not only evil Satan uses to destroy people. When he tests you with evil and he sees you are sensitive, he will bring good. The most important thing is that he's interested in your destruction. Either with evil or good. Hallelujah. For someone you are at a very prophetic season of your life. There are a number of areas in people's lives where you have to take time to dig. Matters of marriage, children, matters, look at me, matters of finances, matters of job and career. Are we together? Matters of where you will stay, what you will be doing, the kind of call, your assignment, these major areas. Oh, you must pray, you must pray. You must pray. Lie down and roll from left to right and say, Father, speak. Speak, oh, speak. Speak. Am I an evangelist or am I a pastor? This one prophesied that I'm an evangelist. Next tomorrow they said I'm a pastor. Be careful. This one said my wife is yellow. This other one said my wife is black, oh, my wife is short, my wife is tall. Very soon you will be like Solomon. You will marry one, 700 wives and, and uh, how many? Uh, 300 concubines. All in the name of prophecy. And they don't have to be fake. We see in part. So you go to God and cry your heart out. Open my eyes, oh God. Are we together? This job gives me 200,000. This one gives me 150,000. But uh, common sense said I should go here. And you miss a season. Let me tell you, not every season is easily recoverable. I can tell you that. Are we together? Don't be careless and think some seasons. Um, now, please don't, don't be offended. And, and I'm not here to forgive me. For instance, missing it out in things like marriage is not easy. You, you will not be without scars. You get what I'm saying now? God tells you three children. You say, no, I know I'm going to give birth to seven. And the remaining four cause headache for you. You almost want to kill them yourself. Because God told you his recommendation, but he will never force you. I know what I'm saying is funny, but listen carefully to what I'm telling you. Take out time and pray. Take out time and pray. Koinonia, take out time and pray. Sensitive things in your life. Parents, which school should my child go to? Don't just say this school is a nice school. They will go and learn something that becomes the reason why they become a pain to your heart. Are we together? Lord, who should be the closest friend to me? Not, I like this person. This person is just nice. 
And before you know it, you draw demons, familiar spirits, and all kinds of causes to your destiny. The implication of friendship is that there is a sharing of spirits. Let me tell you, associations have prophetic implications. If you don't believe me, save Johnny. I will be here to correct you in the future again. Very destiny implicating consequences. If Jonah is in your boat, you will lose your goods. Even if you are a hard-working businessman, you will almost lose your life till you throw him out. But if Jesus is in your boat, don't worry. Even if the storm rocks your boat, your confidence is that Jesus is in your boat. When Lot left Abraham, he was not unrighteous, but he still suffered. Is someone learning now? You don't like what I'm saying? Like it, oh. Like it seriously. I'm teaching you this is a school of prayer. Please go and write down some major areas in your life and flog it out. You need to fast fast. You will not die. Lord, help me. I've been seeing America in my vision. What does that mean? It does not mean go to America. It can mean your helper is in America. Or it can mean intercede for America. You can go to get a visa and for 10 years, you, your life refused to move forward because based on what you saw, truly, you had the dream. You saw America and you assumed, you gave it an interpretation from the flesh. Koinonia is quiet. Pray. Pray. As a husband, hold the hand of your wife and pray. We are fasting today. Lord, what is the next step? Even in ministry, don't assume. You've heard my story. For three years, I struggled with God to leave Zaria and come to Abuja. I didn't want to. I mean, God had glorified himself greatly in Zaria. People were literally coming from all over the world. Can you imagine? In spite of the security situation. I mean, it was at a point in ministry, you would say you had seen the grace of God. What is Abuja again? And you go to pray. Three days before the inaugural service in Abuja here, I still went to God in prayer and fasting. Lord, if for any reason I'm human, if it is my carnal mind, I vow unto you that I will close that in inaugural service. And I meant it. I meant it. I will tell you something. I, I wanted to leave that to announce it at the end of the service, but I'll say it here. I had a meeting with the leaders and we're having to shift and suspend our November conference. Um, we'll have to shift it to next year. I'll tell you what happened. When I announced that I, it was already on the plan, I think two weeks or three weeks ago, before Sound of Revival, I started having an unrest in my spirit. And the unrest was not for the other, it was for the November conference. I just felt like um, something wasn't right. I went to God, I prayed, I fasted, and that, 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 that um, what they call it, lack of peace, cessation of peace. I took out time to pray. And then that was when in the place of prayer, the Lord began to tell me that no, I should shift the November conference. And I said, this is your ministry. This is your whatever it is. I called the leaders immediately. I told them, gentlemen, we're shifting November conference and all of that. After sound of revival, whatever, November conference here, we shift it till the time God allows. As simple as that. The prayer of inquiry. I'm saying this so that you would, I'm not teaching you what I'm not practicing. For someone, you can have five wins, but the sixth one will cancel all five because the sixth one was scheduled, sometimes not necessarily by Satan, because you need two things, the word of the Lord and the timing for its manifestation. If you have a word from God alone without the timing, you will still fail because the power comes at the time. At the time. Hallelujah. Are we together now? Isn't it a mystery? Which ministry do you know, ladies and gentlemen, uh, gentlemen that has not hosted its own conference within its space? and yet is holding conferences around the world, packing stadiums and places. It is against the natural sequence of how ministry is done. I'm not in ignorance. I've read books. I've sat under intelligent people. This is the way of the Spirit. 
The very first conference Koinonia organized was in Manchester. Go and read any Bible school of ministry book. It is foolishness of the highest order. You don't get up and organize your first conference to be an international conference, then the largest indoor arena in the United Kingdom. So don't be angry when sometimes people don't understand you. It's the way of the Spirit. But you see, if it is God, He will always sign on it. You will see the signature of God upon it. Is someone learning now? I'm saying this so that don't become too conventional with your life that you crash down. You are special. There is a way God is working with you and you must respect his dealings with your life. I don't know who came to church to hear God tonight, but hear him all. Hear him through these words you are receiving. The prayer of inquiry. Someone pray in one minute and say, Lord, guide my steps. Order my steps. Take a minute to pray. Order my steps. I'm at a pivotal point. Those outside, are you praying? All the overflows. I am at a critical point in my life. No assumptions. The mistake of great men is assuming that God is always with what they are doing. Just because you succeeded yesterday in ministry, in life, in family, does not mean that you can invent any strategy and then succeed. You must be malleable to the voice of the spirit per time per season otherwise you will crash land no matter how mighty you are nobody is too big to fall nobody is too big to fail nobody is too big to crash land if you cannot inquire from the lord and know what to do per major season of your life i tell you you can crash land in a way that it will look like you never rose up someone pray in one minute order my steps Speak to me. I am not a rebel. My heart is malleable. Speak to me. Go ahead and pray. How can you walk when you don't know the way of the wind? How can you run when you don't know the way of the spirit? How can you fly when you don't know the way of the wind His power at work in you Changing everything In obedience to Christ Recreating everything In obedience to Christ Directing everything In obedience to Christ Hallelujah Let's hurry up so number one prayer model, praying in the spirit. You are filled with the Holy Spirit. You engage with faith in your heart. Number two, the faith-filled declarations of scripture. The requirement, you must be full of the word. Number three, the prayer of inquiry. The key here is patience. You must be patient with God. His word comes. It will not come when you want, but it will come my soul wait thou upon the lord number four the second prayer the fourth prayer model revealed from scripture is called warfare prayer warfare prayer warfare prayer warfare prayer philippians 1 19 warfare prayer this is the realm of warfare and prophetic intercession for i know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Christ Jesus. I know that this shall turn the prayer of deliverance, the prayer that overturns things. This is the kind of prayer you pray when it looks like the devil has scheduled seasons of attacks. When seasons of attacks come to your life, you engage warfare prayers. That is true for you and can be true for your loved ones. Warfare prayer, engaging the mystery of the blood, breaking legal strongholds and covenants, warding off activities of familiar spirits that manipulate men, manipulate systems and structures to work against you as touching the purposes of God. It's in the place of prayer. You deal with this spirit, deal with yokes, deal with curses, deal with the ministry of wicked and unreasonable men for not all men not ha do not have faith. There are men that are determined to walk in partnership with Satan. 
concerning your life. They vow that provided you are in this office, you must die. They don't just want you to lose your job. They don't mind you dying. Just because you are kind does not mean everybody is kind. There are people whose hearts have been seared with iron. They will watch your dead body and still thank God for it. Hell, I hope you believe that. You don't know how evil the heart of man is. The Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked. Wicked. Someone schedules your downfall and comes to stand together with those who are mourning it and say, you mean it? Who is this wicked person who did this? I pray for you. Anybody digging a pit this night, may they fall inside that pit. Anybody coming against your destiny in the spirit of Haman, already in the palace, but digging for your downfall in the name of Jesus, I pray this prayer for you this warfare prayer they will fall into their pit by themselves yeah. sit down sit down i once had a story it was a story that i saw online many years ago that somebody threw another person's neighbor inside a well maybe i'm sure maybe some of you may have had the story threw another person's neighbor out of envy inside the well and the little child died there and by morning the woman came up was crying everybody went to fetch water and they found the child there and the woman who was part of that thing joined the people in mourning until on, upon investigation they found out what happened oh this woman has been treating me bad out of anger wickedness is not a natural thing in the heart of man is the is what happens when spirits possess men they can do things that they themselves later will say, ah, who did this thing like that? Spirits for you. That's why it's important for people to be born again. Your husband can turn and act like a beast. And while he's beating you, pounding you, beating you with the pregnancy and the child, you are looking, is this him? It can't be him. That's not the man you married. That's another spirit there. And then later on, you counsel him and he says, I'm sorry. Then he does it again. You better bring him for koinonia. Bring him to koinonia quickly. <laughs> Let me balance it. What of your wife too? You come into the kitchen and you see her sitting and folding her arms. Where is my food? Which food? You talk to me, I'm, I will beat you here. And you will see a woman with the strength of 10 men beat you and drag you as masculine as you are spirits for you this is one of the reasons why God raised us all, to be instruments of help and mercy some of you when you came here you didn't even know the variety of spirits you carried anger jealousy pain all kinds of things and whilst you are seated some of those shouts you shout some of those falling you don't know what is living it's until you go back and see that you are back to your right mind. That anger is no longer there. Your grandfather was an angry man. Your father was an angry man. Now as a young man, you have beat your elder ones. You have beat your parents. You have beat your pastor. You have beat your classmates. It's a spirit. That kind of person, if he's not delivered, I assure you, he will end up in jail. Parents, let me tell you something. When you see your child's behavior beyond the threshold that discipline can afford, bring them to church. I'm telling you, just bring them. I know what to do with them. Bring them to church. It takes the power of God. You can correct when the spirit leaves. Doing a rehabilitation when the spirit is still there is a waste of time. Take it from me. Oh, don't smoke again. Don't behave. Greet elders and the child says, all right. And you say, say after me, I'm a good boy now. I'm a good boy now. Junior loves mommy and all those things as soon as you are done by evening They call you from the police station to come and carry your child again. It's a spirit. I Know you are laughing, but I hope you get what I'm saying Many people are under the influence of spirits. They will not admit it, but it is true There are Behaviors that are beyond human behaviors human beings cannot be that wicked that jealous that wicked and one way Satan keeps you oppressed is making you live in denial. You say, no, no, my anger is just, it's just once in a while. It's just that it's a thing in our family. I say it again. If there is anything 
that is not of the Christ. Any spirit influence around your life. I don't care whether you are a man of God, you are a ministry, you are whatever. I pray for you. If there is any influence producing manifestations that are not of the Christ, tying down your life down. In the name of Jesus, be delivered now. Be delivered now. Are we together? Warfare. Spirits that cause all kinds of things. A beautiful lady, but nobody can ever come and say, let me go and see your parents. And you are wondering, you are modest, you are decent, you love God. Are we together now? The day anybody comes to say, ah, this lady, where are your parents? The next day you hear the person is dead. And you think it's normal. It happened to four or five people. Please, open up your heart and cry. Anything that came with my background and my foundation that wants to follow me and ruin my life, I come by the blood. That's how you pray warfare prayer. In the name of Jesus, I may have come from a family of idol worship, but the Bible says I've been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation. The consequences of the sacrifices of yesteryears cannot be part of my life. I consciously, I cut myself away. Families where men are fed by women, they never rise to a point, if you like her PhD, is your wife that feeds you, is in your wife's house you stay, or in her parents' house you stay. My brother, it's not so. God establishes men. I hope you know spirits don't get tired. Don't think because they've been in your life since you were two years and now you are 35, they are tired. You are the only one who is tired. Those spirits are still energetic. They can stay through your lifetime, except when power comes. Some of you may need to take the responsibility. The victory that is in Christ is real, but it does not come upon you without you engaging it. For the same reason that I stated when I started, you have a will. God cannot assume you are tired of it. You must verbalize it in prayer and appropriate it in prayer. I have met preachers who love God with integrity and character, but they will never admit that the reason their ministries are stunted is because there are strange powers that sit upon their destinies. They will argue it to their detriment. Individuals have spirits assigned to them. Regions have spirits assigned to them. That's why you see repetition of patterns according to regions. Irresponsibility, anger, laziness. Are we together? All these kinds of things. I don't want you to feel condemned and I don't want you to feel sad. I know a family where all of them are hard working. The, the men are diligent. They start businesses. You don't fail when you start. You only rise up to a point where you want to sit down to be celebrated. Something happens and you must go down. Go to Europe, the spirit follows you there. Go to America, it follows you there. Because wickedness is all over the world. I'm praying for someone again. I don't know what pattern you have observed. Maybe your loved ones have not observed it. But as a Christian, with maturity, you have seen that this pattern of untimely death. Maybe people die early. The men die early. The women die early. The men struggle. They love Jesus. Or something happens. They never have children in their matrimonial home. They only have children outside of wedlock before they get married. Everybody don't feel condemned i'm helping you a woman with five children from five different men is a spirit it doesn't mean the person is bad some of them can be the most sincere people grandmother raped by someone mother raped by someone the daughter raped by someone in the name of jesus any pattern around your life that will not let you go it has tied you down you are called but is refusing to allow your bishop refined expression i cause it tonight by the blood I curse it tonight by the blood. 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 Every pattern of untimely death around anyone here, you have seen your loved ones die. And that thing you know is still in the family. You see it in your dreams. You go to bed and you see dead people coming. What is your business with those who have died? I say it again. Be delivered from that influence. How about those? Their good is always evil spoken of. They are always well intentioned. But everybody suspects them. 
everybody, a good woman, you cook and everybody say you want to kill someone and your heart is sincere. There is a spirit that makes the good of a man become evil. I pray for you. Every veil on your face that misrepresents you. When Satan wants to destroy people, he uses your face in their dreams. They wake up seeing you and they think you are a witch. I decree and declare, may that oppression of darkness come to an end now. Please be seated. Warfare prayers. There are people today who have been hated by literally nations. Hated all across. You know why? Because someone goes to bed and the devil uses their face and they wake up saying, ah, so this woman wants to press me and kill me. So this man wants to kill me. Whereas that is one of the most sincere people. They come to the office and the man says, good afternoon. Say, no, you are leaving my office today. What did I do, sir? The man cannot say, and sometimes, with all due respect, this is where we men of God must learn how to walk in the spirit so that you don't just misinterpret prophetic things. When such a person comes to meet you as a man of God and say, I had a dream. I saw the face of this woman and she was pressing me. You now seal it and say, ah, that's truly a witch. You imagine what happens if you come to church and the woman is sitting by your side. They say, praise the Lord, she's praying. You are saying, ah, this prayer, you are a witch. You would die here. There are so many people carrying foolish illusions in their minds. Drama, only their mind is acting. Are we together? They have a list of people they believe are witches. A list of others they believe are wizards. And they literally live their entire life in a war, like computer game, in their minds. An illusion. The Bible calls it cunningly devised fables. Hmm. Are we together? There are great friends who have been destroyed by these spirits destroyed by these spirits you just have a dream and in the dream the devil manipulates the faces of people who are some of the greatest gifts in your life and you see them and wake up and say no it doesn't mean when you see the face of someone it automatically means that person is destroying you you need to discern sometimes it's the deception of satan are we together what then happens to a man who lies down the same bed with his wife and wakes up in the night and in a dream the wife is pressing him and then by morning she says honey good morning the man says good morning i've had you and from that day trouble that counseling cannot solve because the man cannot say i think my wife is a witch your food is served the soccer i bought my own from restaurant i just want a change of a meal and they start lying and dribbling the wife like that but the real problem is that they saw a vision and it was satan that created that manipulation and sometimes if they are not careful, they come to us men of God and we say, you know the solution? Go and read the book of Jonah. Whatever happened to Jonah, let that be what happens here. You see, you have, you have exempted yourself from trouble. You didn't say anything, but you said everything. May you never fall into the hand of unserious people. Amen. With all due respect, that also includes ministers of the gospel. May you not fall into the hand of ignorant preachers. Amen. Nobody deceive and confuse and waste your life and turn, make a caricature out of your Christian experience because of ignorance. And if there's anybody here you've been swayed around, a battlefield was created as a result of ignorance. May knowledge bring you stability. In Jesus' name I pray. Number four. The fourth prayer model and then we'll stop. Huh? Number what? Number one was what? Number two? Number three? Number four? Okay, number five, the prayer of thanksgiving. The prayer of thanksgiving. Colossians 4.2. 4.2. Let's hurry up. Colossians 4.2. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Philippians 4 and verse 6, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication 
with thanksgiving with thanksgiving let your request be made known do you know what it means to pray the prayer of thanksgiving it means it's, it's a manifestation of faith where you begin to thank God in advance. So everything that you want to ask, you ask it as if it's already given. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus because my day is blessed. Is someone learning now? I thank you because my going out is blessed. I thank you because my coming in is blessed. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for my friends. I thank you for my children. I thank you for my business. I thank you for my office. Someone talk to me. I thank you for everything you are doing around my life. I decree and declare that thanksgiving, the voice of melody and thanksgiving will not depart from me. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is very powerful. A man of God says thanksgiving is an application for more. How true. Thanksgiving. Someone say thank you, Jesus. One more time, say thank you, Jesus. Learn to declare prayers with thanksgiving. In fact, it is a very worthy model to end your prayers with thanksgiving. Father, I thank you because I know that you've heard me. In John chapter 11, when Jesus was at the grave, the tomb of Lazarus, you would think you would cry and say, oh, this and that. After he was done crying, he thanked the Lord. He said, Father, I thank you, John 11, because you always hear me. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. That was the kind of prayer that Jesus used. You notice Jesus used prayer number five and then prayer number two that's what brought Lazarus out prayer model number five Thanksgiving and then number two declarations Lazarus come forth so we see these prayer models even in the life of Jesus himself he said father I thank you you would not go before a tomb and be saying thank you when you get there the, the usual question human question is why Lord but he never made any inquiry prayer there he just said father i thank you because you always hear me same thing happened when he was going to multiply five loaf and two fish the bible says he lifted it up and he gave thanks and he gave the disciples he said go and distribute it i'm praying for someone may you be thankful even in your prayer now let me tell you this thanksgiving this prayer demands a lot of thoughtfulness you want to pray the prayer of thanksgiving, you must learn to count your blessings. You must learn to see the good that God has done in your life. Beyond the things you are expecting God for. Usually, thanksgiving starts from the things he has done past. And then you now connect to the things you hope and trust that he does in the present and the future. Are we together? Father, thank you because you are my God. Thank you for giving me a job not oh god you know the salary they slashed our salary now is it that you are not seeing no prayer of thanksgiving you find every good thing you know that god has done and you acknowledge it and thank him thank you yes the husband is not still behaving well but thank god you have a husband yes the children are not yet in school but thank god you have them father i give you thanks i bless you I bless you. You can turn it into a song. You can turn it into worship. Thanksgiving is powerful. Someone say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. you are trusting God for a job, but don't forget your eyes are seeing, your ears are hearing. Your hands can walk. Your feet can walk. If you are grounded and they tell you you have stage four cancer, at that point, it's not a job you will pray for again. You will be gasping for life. Someone in the hospital who had a job but did not have health. Now you have health, but you don't have a job. So you thank God. The prayer of thanksgiving demands that you become discerning and thoughtful. Thank God. I've not gotten a contract, but at least I have a company that is functional. And I know God will do it. Father, thank you because I know you have gone ahead of me. I thank you because I know that there are benefits that you have given to me. I may not see the wind, I may not see the rain, but I thank you because my band shall be filled with plenty. I give you all the praise. This is how to pray the prayer of thanksgiving. It is powerful when it is healing when you thank God. Because it does something to you. You take your mind away from what has not been done to what God is doing. You know, it's a human thing to always see what God has not done. God, you gave me tea, but there's no bread, there's no butter. And God says, focus on the tea and thank me. And while you are thanking him, you will turn around and see that there's bread, there's butter, and there's even a bakery. God for you. Thanksgiving attracts. It attracts more of what you are thanking God for. It attracts the more of God. One way to ask God for things is to give thanks for what he is given. Someone again say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. One more time, say, thank you, Jesus. thank you, Jesus. 
I'm going to jump one and head straight to the final discussion. There was a particular subtopic that I wanted us to look at, but forgive me, I have to jump that. I want to go straight to how God answers prayers. Very quickly, how God answers prayers. How God answers prayers. We need to know how prayers manifest. The Bible assures us according to Mark 11 and verse 24 that whatsoever things we desire, when we pray, we should believe we will receive it and the Bible assures us that we will have it. In Matthew 7, 7 and 8, the Bible says, Ask and ye shall receive, verse 8 says, For everyone that asketh, receive it. So if the Bible has this kind of assurance, it then means when we pray, we have an assurance. What I wanted to teach us, unfortunately, uh, was how to pray a fervent and effectual prayer. How to pray with passion and how to pray word compliant prayer. How to pray according to the will of God. A very important point, but we'll have to jump it for now. We'll look at it another time. But refer to my message effective prayer dynamics effective prayer dynamics effective prayer dynamics there i teach on the subject that i just skipped now effective prayer dynamics you can get that on koinonia global god bless you so how does god answer prayers the bible says unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come there are essentially three ways please listen answers to prayer manifest using three platforms there are three platforms essentially for the manifestations of answered prayer so i know by faith that god has answered my prayer the prayer for anything whatsoever but how do i receive it physically this is what i want to teach you now number one the first platform for answered prayers is called supernatural manifestations supernatural manifestations that means God gives you peace, God gives you joy, God gives you healing, God gives you deliverance. These are all supernatural manifestations. When you pray, the answers come directly, supernaturally, as peace to your troubled heart, as joy, as healing. Say for instance, if you or anyone who is anointed prays, and let's say you have pain, the pain can leave immediately. You know the prayer has been answered because the manifestation has come supernaturally though. Daniel chapter 3, when you read from verse 24 to 30, the Bible tells us about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were thrown into the burning furnace of fire. And the Bible tells us that their deliverance was instant. We saw the manifestation of God's hand. They had made bold declarations. They declared to the king that God was going to save them and that even if he did not save them, they would not bow to his image. And the Bible says they threw them there. And when they threw them, there were answers to the prayer immediately. It was supernatural. They saw the fourth man who was there. And the Bible says that their bands were loose and they were walking freely in the midst of the fire. The appearance of the fourth being like the son of God. Hallelujah. And then the Bible says that there were men who the fire had no power over. So you can receive supernatural manifestations. This is common in the area of healing, common in the area of deliverance, common in the area of trouble within your spirit. You cannot hold peace. You cannot hold joy. You cannot hold healing. You cannot hold deliverance. Yet their effect can be very real. You are suffering from cancer. God heals you. The results show immediately. You go to the hospital and they will tell you, like the person who shared the testimony of the enlarged heart, you see that a miracle happens and you see that your heart returns to normal. The madman in Gadara. A miracle happened and he returned immediately to his sound mind. The man at Gate Beautiful. So God answers prayers. Prayers manifest as supernatural manifestations. I'm praying for someone already. In the name of Jesus, every supernatural manifestation, whether healing, whether deliverance, whether peace to your troubled heart, whether a restoration of your joy, I'm praying now in the name of Jesus that you have it in this place. Amen. You receive it here and now. Amen. Shout a believing amen. amen. Why am I teaching you this? So that when you pray, based on whatever need, you know how the answers are. Are we together? If you are praying for healing, 
expect a supernatural manifestation. That's how the healing comes. That's how the healing comes. Now, there are times that God can use doctors, he can use medicine, but I'm talking about the three ways. So number one, supernatural manifestations. Supernatural manifestations. Number two, the second way that God answers prayer is by releasing the graces. Listen carefully. Releasing the graces that attract the physical results. Releasing the graces that attract the physical results. God answers prayers by releasing graces, spiritual resources that attract the physical results. Graces like wisdom, graces like favor, graces like direction, graces like understanding. Give us 1 Kings chapter 3, please, from verse 5. God answers prayers by releasing graces. That means when you go to the place of prayer, as you are praying and asking God for things, take note that the answer can come as a release of graces. Do you know some of you, when you shout and fall in koinonia while I teach, it's not always deliverance. This is it. Many times what is actually happening to you is an impartation. You are receiving a grace bespoke to that situation you are trusting God for. It can come as wisdom. It can come as favor and impartation. These graces, I've referred to my teaching through riches. I told you that physical things are products. They are drawn by the spiritual resources we have. Are we together? Most believers pray and they don't know the answer to their prayer. For instance, you are saying, oh God, bring me promotion in the name of Jesus. But there is a level of mental capacity you need in order to be promoted. So God answers that prayer by releasing that grace. A higher level of wisdom. A higher level of insight. You find out that you understand your job in a way that is, is a lot more efficient. And very soon your superiors can see that there's been improvement. It's called an excellent spirit. It's a grace. Daniel had that. That was how Daniel was elevated. That an excellent spirit was upon him. For someone, whilst you are hearing me now, there's prayer that you've been praying from January. God answered the prayer, but because you've not been taught how answers manifest, you've been looking physical, you've been looking around, yet the grace has come upon you. What do you do with the graces? Number one, you acknowledge them. Philemon 1 verse 6, that the communication of your faith might become effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. You acknowledge the grace that that grace has come upon me. Then you engage the grace by faith. Engage the grace by faith. There is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the almighty maketh men of understanding. But what do you do with the understanding? You have to engage. He shall be of quick understanding. Isaiah 11 and verse 3. He shall be of quick understanding. Of quick understanding. Of quick understanding. God answers prayer by releasing the various graces that are responsible for the command of the physical testimonies we desire. Please look at me. When you pray and say, Father, give me money, there are many ways he can answer that prayer. But the most classical way of answering that prayer is to give you the spiritual resources, the power to prosper, wisdom, favor, like you have learned. Refer to my message, Seasons of Abundance. My most recent message on finances. There are a lot others, the power to get wealth and so on and so forth. Now when God releases that grace upon you, what happens is as you engage it, that grace begins to attract people, circumstances and opportunities that are consistent with your desire. Are we together now? Yes. You find out that your problem solving abilities are heightened by the spirit. God leads you to learn certain solutions that you bring to men's problems and soon increase comes to you. But it first came as an increase in grace. The Bible says grace and peace be multiplied. When grace is multiplied, results are also multiplied. May grace be multiplied for someone. Amen. Shout amen like you're interested. So 1 Kings chapter 3, please, from verse 5. Let's hurry up. 1 Kings 3 from verse 5. The Bible says that Solomon had an encounter with God. It says, in Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. Are we still here? And the Bible says God told him, ask, I want to give you. But he gave him nothing physical. When you read the full text, is to 13. 
to 13. Go to verse 9 for sake of time. So he gave Solomon asked for an understanding heart to judge the people. That was what he asked for. Are you seeing that? He didn't ask for people. He asked for understanding heart that he would discern judgment. Verse 10. The Bible says God was pleased. And verse 11. He now says that since you did not ask for long life or for riches or for the life of your enemies but you ask for understanding hear what God gave him 12 and 13 he says I have done according to thy words I have given thee this transaction was happening in a dream he didn't wake up with any physical thing yet his prayer was answered I have given thee an understanding heart so that there is none like thee before thee neither after thee shall any arise unto thee read 13 interesting scripture I have also given thee both riches and honor these are graces God did not bring money. He didn't wake up and see gold or whatever, ivory or whatever as they used those days. He gave him riches as a grace. He gave him honor as a grace. And when the man got up in no time, kings began to come from various nations because his wisdom was so compelling. And they brought him gold. They brought him ivory. Even the queen of Sheba, she was the last. It was recorded of the royalties to come. She came bearing gifts. So when you pray and say, Father, increase me, change my story, it's important to know how God answers. The very common way of God answering, if it's not something that requires a supernatural manifestation like healing, most physical results, physical testimonies are answered by God releasing the graces that attract them. The graces that attract them. There is a grace that can attract the resources you are praying for. There is a grace that can attract the finances. There is a grace that can attract whatever it is. Looking for it is a waste of time. You receive the grace and it draws it to you. Say amen. amen. The final way God answers prayer is through the ministry of men. The ministry of men. The ministry of men. 1 Samuel 10, 26-27. 1 Samuel 10, 26, 27. Someone's prayer life is becoming richer because you are learning now how God answers prayer. And Saul went home to Gibeah and there went with him. I like this. When I was studying, preparing for this, my God, this scripture, I've seen it before, but it came with light. It blew my spirit. Watch this. And there went with him a band of men. Read the last sentence. Whose hearts God had touched. Whose hearts God had touched. 27. But the children of Belial said, How shall this man save us? These were the ones whose hearts were not touched. And they despised him and brought him no presence. Give us amplified, please. Same scripture. Amplified. Same scripture. Go to 26 again. Saul went home to Gibeah. And the Bible says, they went with him a band of valiant men whose hearts God had touched. Nobody follows you until God touches their hearts. Nobody helps you. When you see a man coming to assist you, the Bible says this is a mystery that God had touched in their hearts. I think his promise, who says it when he's taking the offering? He says, may God put your name in the hearts of men. This is what he tries to say. Verse 27. The Bible said, but some worthless fellows said, how can this man save us? This is what you get when God does not touch the heart of men and they come around you. They will despise you. He says, how can this man save us? And they despised him and brought him no gift. But he held his peace as if he was deaf. Men whose heart God has touched. Father, I'm praying that you bring me out of this calamity. You know how God answers you? When he grants you those graces, he will touch the heart of someone. Oh, happy is the man who meets a man whose heart God has touched. They will do things as if they are under the influence of a charm. Where is your mother? Where is your father? Tell them I will start helping you every day. I will be sending one, one million till December. It is my contribution to this family. No strings attached. And you are even afraid. There are men whose heart God has touched. God can touch the heart of royalties. God can touch the heart of men of influence. Do you believe this? Men whose heart God has touched. Every man of God needs to pray this prayer. Nobody has members. 
you only have those whose heart God has touched nobody follows you just because somebody is with you for many years does not mean they are with you men whose heart God has touched this here is the secret of loyalty is the secret of commitment is the secret of genuine connection whether for ministry whether for business if you are a leader here here's your prayer point for this week go and pray father touch the heart of men for my sake I have taught you Numbers chapter 1 and verse 5. These are the names of the people who shall stand with you. Who shall stand with you. Who shall stand with you. Not everybody stands with you. The Jesus you love so much, there are people who despise him because their hearts have not been touched. It is amazing how you can be a champion to someone and you can be bilial to another person depending on whose heart God has touched. So don't be surprised when people despise you while others are celebrating you. I think it's something preachers are having a hard time to understand. How could somebody celebrate you, honor you, love you, serve that grace, and then another person despises you so harshly? Unfortunately, it is not every man whose heart has been touched for you. It is your assignment as a man of God to say, Lord, all that you have given me, touch their heart. Don't make a mistake of thinking that as congregants sit down and look at you as a man of God, they are truly connected. If God does not touch their heart, they can be with you for 10 years and one day they will say crucify him and go to bed while you are on the cross. Did you hear what I said? Pray for everybody in your house, oh, house help, security people, whatever. God touch their heart. If not, the day somebody comes to say, look, oh, can you help me and kill this man? Ask Judas. Judas was with Jesus, but his heart was not touched. You need to pray. Leaders, pray for everybody within your circle. Those who play pivotal role. God, touch them. Touch their hearts. Let them be loyal indeed. Committed indeed. Spouses, pray for yourselves one for another. So that there's no falsehood and deception. Pray for yourself. Give us that scripture again. Saul also went home to Gibeah and there went with him a band of valiant men. Men whose hearts God has touched. Your destiny helper comes under this category. Are we together? Have you read a very interesting story in the Bible? We're about to pray. That story is found, I think in Luke chapter, is it Luke chapter 10? from verse 29 to 36 just write it for reference Luke chapter 10 is the story of a man called the Samaritan have you heard the story of the good Samaritan so I will quote it quickly for time the Bible tells us that there was this man read verse 30 Jesus now is explaining that there was a certain man who went down from Jerusalem to Jericho he fell among thieves please look up and they stripped him of his garment they wounded him and they departed leaving him half dead everybody say half dead and there were three people who were who came to the life of that man the most likely people did not help him number one was a priest the priest came when you read the verses a priest came and saw him and went away as if he did not see anything number two a levite came people of consecration came and saw him and passed on but then number three a man whose heart God had touched the Bible said a certain Samaritan when he saw him he had compassion upon him and what did he do in response to the compassion 34 he bound his wounds he poured oil he poured wine he set him on his own donkey he brought him to a hotel and took care of him and he went further verse 35 to leave an instruction he said he took two pens and gave the hotel host and said take care of him and whatever else you spend i will come back and repay you men whose heart god has touched they will pay your rent last year and come this year again and say are you stable now you say not yet sir and say don't worry i will still pay it men whose heart god has touched who needs those kind of people men whose heart i'm about to pray that prayer for you 
men whose hearts i've seen a few of these kinds of people in my life and in all fairness most of you if not all of you are here because this happened to you you need these kinds of people in your life else as a man of god you will walk alone as a leader you will walk alone as a businessman you will walk alone or you will be surrounded by psycho fans to a point where you will live in fear everybody is answering yes sir but the truth is that their hearts have not been touched they will sell you for 30 shekels they will sell you for anything at all judas even the brothers of joseph they were not touched even though they were his brothers when an opportunity came they sold him cheaply it takes beyond proximity for connection to happen god must touch the heart of a man maybe we should start with that prayer we'll start with this prayer and then connect to others whilst you are seated lord touch the heart of my helpers in this season touch the heart of anyone and everyone who is part of your prophetic program for me whilst you are seated make sure you pray outside pray businessmen pray maybe this is the miracle you came to church to receive lord touch the heart of someone where is the good samaritan who must show me kindness where is the good samaritan who will make prophecy happen in my life where is that helper in ministry that helper in business mama pray for your children where is the helper that god has positioned to lift my children some of them are in a foreign land void of help lord send to my life send to my family send to my ministry sent to my home sent to my job sent to my destiny the man whose heart God has touched someone take a minute to pray you are investing in your destiny this is a school of prayer God answers prayer by sending men God answers prayers by releasing graces supernatural endowments that command physical results physical testimonies God answers prayers by granting you access to supernatural experiences. Someone pray. The final arrival of all answer to prayers is the arrival of men. They come with the gifts they carry. They come with glad tidings. They come with physical things. They come with goodness. They come with mercy. Men are an expression of God's goodness. Men are an expression of God's mercy. Men are an expression of God's prosperity. Your wealth is in the hands of men. Your favor is in the hands of men. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and pray. The land you will build on is currently in the hand of some man. God needs to help you. If God does not touch the heart of men, you will live a defeated life. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. In this season, oh God, I receive answers to prayer. If it's a healing, cry for a supernatural manifestation. Let that cancer die. Let that deliverance be perfected. Let this recurrent ill health give way once and for all. Let this blood condition go. It is within your power to heal me and to heal me now. Heal me, O oh God, and I will be healed. Save me and I shall be saved. Now go ahead and pray. The resources of wisdom, the resources of favor, the resources of direction, the resources of power, the resources of the anointing, the resources of honor, let it rest upon me drawing to my life physical testimonies testimonies of abundance and increase believers are praying two or three more minutes go ahead and pray oh, my help has come oh come oh, oh, oh my lifting has come oh, 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 oh my help has come oh, oh
Jesus listen to me it is impossible to have your prayer life go down when you understand these things that this is a treasure that is hidden in a life of prayer that every time I commit to prayer I give God an opportunity to reveal his glory through my life imagine the things we miss when we do not pray and imagine the things we miss when we pray without understanding. Imagine the things we miss when we pray are miss. That prayer is predicated upon the fact that your will needs to be active for your destiny and God's purposes through you to be actualized. He made it so. He gave you that gift and that gift had placed a mandate upon your life that you must always communicate your needs communicate your needs no assumption no presumption and I've taught you tonight that there are various assignments to prayer your growth and transformation obtaining requests in the place of prayer making decrees establishing spiritual realities I also taught you that the final assignment of prayer is for warfare and intercession I've taught you various prayer models. Make sure you take advantage of them. That you can pray in the spirit. Building up yourself on your most holy faith. Consistently growing. Molding yourself to a more powerful version. Are we together now? That you can pray declaring faith-filled declaration of scriptures. You can pray the prayer of inquiry. You can pray warfare. Warfare prayer. And you can pray with thanksgiving. As the tool for receiving now I've taught you finally that when God answers prayers these are the three channels for its manifestation number one God answers prayers by giving you supernatural manifestations like a healing miracle like a deliverance are we together supernatural it is instant and yet even though it's from the spirit you can have a physical expression and then that God releases graces in answer to prayer graces of wisdom graces of favor graces of power graces of understanding graces of direction graces of honor when you carry these graces the graces have a mandate to draw forth physical circumstances physical experiences that translate to your testimony and that the final arrival of every answered prayer is through the ministry of men they come in response to what you are carrying on your head they come in response to something God has placed upon your life. And that for that to happen, God must touch their hearts. Men can be aware of your need, but it does not mean they will respond to it. These are the men whose heart God has touched. Who has learned tonight? Go back and listen to this message. Go back and meditate upon this. Meditate upon this until your prayer life becomes richer and becomes fuller I'll ask you to pray one prayer and then I speak over your life father everything that has killed my prayer life I command it out of my destiny fan my prayer life back to life I need to be a believer with power a believer with results I intend to gain mastery in the place of prayer someone pray someone pray take a minute to pray prayer that translates to your prosperity to your advancement to your empowerment consistent unending results by the spirit you are taking a minute to pray fan back the ambers of prayer fan back your altar in the name of jesus christ in jesus name we pray let me speak over you now in the name that is above all names i pray for someone the encounters you lost as a result of the decline of your prayer life may it resume tonight 
the supernatural encounters that brought you direction that made your future predictable you knew things before they happened you walked with certainty and accuracy but you lost it as a result of a loss in your prayer life like the hair of samson i pray for a restoration tonight 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 the grace to pray in the spirit and to pray consistently receive it right now the grace to consistently make faith-filled declarations receive that grace right now in the name of jesus christ i pray for you the discipline and the patience to pray the prayer of inquiry till you find direction for your life and destiny i declare receive it right now in the mighty name of jesus christ i pray for you by the power of the holy spirit the discipline and the discernment to engage warfare and intercession if and when the need arises receive the grace in the name of jesus receive the grace in the name of jesus and now i pray for everyone here who is sick in your body you are in need of a touch supernaturally may god answer that prayer now may god answer that desire now that you will walk out of this place healed you will walk out of this place delivered brand new organs to your body in the name of jesus i pray for you every grace every spiritual resource that needs to land on your head and to begin to attract strange testimonies to your life whether it is wisdom receive it be it favor receive it be it honor receive it be it understanding receive it in the name of jesus christ final prayer point i don't know whose heart god needs to touch this night i don't know who god needs to wake from sleep for your sake for your sake not to punish them not to be evil towards them but for your sake that god will wake them like he woke ahasuerus and cause them to open the book of remembrance i pray for you may god touch the heart of someone for your sake may god touch the heart of a gatekeeper for your sake may god touch the heart of your boss for your sake may god touch the heart of a man of god for your sake may god touch the heart of a wealthy and established man for your sake in the name of jesus christ my final prayer is that every spirit that has been assigned to attack your prayer life attack your word study life and make what you have heard tonight profitless and of non-effect i decree and declare that those spirits are banished from your habitation banished from your habitation in the name of jesus thanks for watching revival time hub but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was.